In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the use of the data commands parameter collection. The parameter collection is used whenever you want to set variable, variable information within a store procedure that will execute on SQL Server. So in the case that we have here, I've built a small example application that allows us to add a new uh, store to our um, store table within the pubs database. And when we click on the add button, it'll take the values from store and uh, from the store um, text boxes that we had on the form and we'll add them into a parameters collection. And we'll talk about this more in a moment. And then finally, it will actually execute the non-query and then it will retrieve values back. Now let's take a quick look at the actual um, pubs database store procedure that we've used for this example. So we can learn a little bit more about what's going to happen behind the scenes. I've created an insert store stored procedure. And so it takes in a number of, of, um, of parameters, input parameters, for example, the store ID, the store name, the store address, the city state zip, and then I've got one output parameter called current count. And we're going to return back to the application the actual count of records in the database so far. So here we see our SQL statement, insert stores and in all the name of the field, and then all the name of the parameters that are passed in that match those fields. Now you'll notice that one convention that I use um, when I'm designing um, applications is that my parameters match the names of the tables with the exception of the little at sign which designates this as a parameter within SQL Server. Notice I have a second SQL statement and that is select at current e underscore count equals count star from stores. And what this will do is put into that output parameter the count of records from the stores table. And that will be sent back to our application after the insert is complete. So now how do we send information using the command object into that store procedure so that we can add new stores to our database? The way you do that again is through a um, parameters object. Now the first thing that we do is create an imports statement, import system.data.sql client, then I create a private instance of a connection object. And so then I create an instance of the command object. And I dim another variable called rows affected. We'll use that in a moment. Then I set our instance of connection equal to a new instance of the SQL connection object and set the connection string. We've already talked about that in the two previous videos. And now we set some of the properties of the command object. For example, the command text equals SP insert store and notice that we use the command type dot stored procedure as opposed to text. We're going to call a stored procedure. And then we set the connection object equal to our instance of the SQL connection. Now we go through the unenviable task of adding parameters to uh, our parameters collection of our command object. To do that we use the CMD, our instance of the command, SQL command, dot parameters dot add. And there are several different ways that you can do this. I chose to use the, the full text of or the, all the, the values. So basically I'm passing in the actual name of the input parameter. And don't forget to add that little at sign there or your application won't work. Then we send in the type of, of data type it is. In this case it's a char of size 4. On the second line, then I actually select that item from the collection and set its value equal to whatever the user typed into the text box on our form. In other words, whatever they typed in there. And so we repeat this for each of the forms or fields on our form by adding another parameter and then setting its value, adding another parameter, store address, and then setting its store address's value to the text field. And we do that all the way till we get to current count. Now there's a little bit different thing that we'll do with current count. Current count again is an output parameter. You can see here that we have command.parameters.data and current count, SQL DB type of integer. But instead of setting the value, what we want to do is set the direction. So we do cmd.parameters.item current count dot direction equals parameter direction dot output. Now why didn't we have to set the direction for any of the other previous 
parameters that we created in our parameters collection. Well, that's because the parameter direction by default is input. So we only need to specify it if it is an output parameter. So here we open our connection. We execute our non-query from our command. And we grab the number of rows that were affected. And then we quickly select the close for the connection. We want to close those connections as soon as possible because .NET makes use of, uh, of connection pooling, which means that it tries to optimize the use of connections to save connections. Too many connections slows down your database. It also um, is outside probably of, of your licensing agreements of so many licenses that you purchased for SQL Server. And then what we do is we dim a new value, I current count as integer. And here we're going to refer to the command parameters collection once again. We'll type in cmd.parameters.item current count dot value. Here's where we actually retrieve the value. We place it into our newly created uh, our newly created um, a variable. And then we print that out in a message box. The current count is I current count. So enough talking about the code, let's actually see it in action. So the, despite the fact that we saw a little problem there, that was by design actually. It's uh, related to another uh, form that's within our application. There's a build error. So at any rate, for our uh, purposes of our application, let's go ahead and type in a store ID. We have to remember we don't have any a validation on our form here, so we have to be careful about what we type. We're going to type in C123, store name, um, Scott's Books, store address 123 East Main Street. The city is going to be um, Burbank, Illinois, 60459, and we're going to click the Add button. And when we do, notice that our um, that our uh, store procedure executed correctly because not only did it do the insert, which we're assuming it did, but it also brought back to us the current count, which was 11. So we're going to go ahead and close this down. And let's take a look and verify the results by going to our table, stores, and looking for store C123 which we can see there, Scott's Books, 123 East Main Street, Burbank. Great. Now we went through a lot of work within our code to actually create each of the parameters and then set their value, create the parameter, set their value. There's a lot of typing involved here. What if I told you there was a lot easier way to do this with Visual Studio? You probably wouldn't be surprised at this point. So what we want to do is actually open up another um, example here, which is the parameter examples 2, which looks identical, but there's going to be a big difference. Here, let me close down some of the other stuff we have within our IDE. Okay, great. What I'm going to do this time is actually go to our handy-dandy server explorer and drag and drop our SP insert stored procedure and drop it onto our form. And when we do that, a little designer area has the connection and the SQL command. And we can take a look at the properties here and note that all the values are filled in for us. So we have the data source already filled in, all the connection information, and then the command objects already filled in. And uh, we can even take a look at the parameters collection, notice that there's a little ellipsis button. When I click on that, we can actually take a look at all the SQL parameters, every single one of them, and all the values that they already have in there. So we don't have to go through the tedious steps of typing all them in. We could even preset the values here if we wanted to, to all of these things. So if, if you have a stored procedure and you don't need to dynamically change it, you could do it right from this uh, and, and say every time the state will be TX or will be IL or will be California. But that's not quite what we're going to do because we want to be able to use the values that are passed in. But this still simply great, uh, uh, greatly simplifies what we're, what we're trying to do here. Notice what I've done different now. I've taken the liberty of adding the code already. Is that with 
I use a with statement with the SQL command one dot parameters. And now all I got to do is set the item value equal to whatever the text box is for that value. So notice how many lines of code I had to type as compared to how many lines of code I typed in the previous example. Then I still open the connection and do everything else the same. But I don't have to add the parameters. The parameters are already added for me, and that is key. It is so simple to do that. Now, where did all the, that hard work go? All that typing, where did it go? Well, it's still in the application. When I open up the region Windows Form Designer Generate a Code, I can scroll down and see all of, of the, um, let's see, let's get down here, to the SQL command parameters. He's added all these parameters in and uh, it did some work with the connection object as well to set the connection string and so on. So that work is still done. It's just done for us automatically. We don't have to touch that. It makes it a lot easier. And we can still get at the source code. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to change this project, uh, project's properties to make the parameter example 2 our startup. And to do that, I'll go to the data command and uh, property pages and, and select parameter example 2 and then I'll select run and so here we'll go T123 store name Puzzly's library and we'll put 13 mockingbird and this will be Anywhere, Pennsylvania, 132, and we'll click Add. And now the current count is 12. So let's recap. Whenever you have a, uh, a stored procedure that you want to call from within your application, you're probably going to need to pass in some parameters to that stored procedure. And to do that, you use the command object's parameter collection. You add parameters to the collection based on the parameters that are already within your stored procedure, and then you set each one of their items value equal to some value. In this case, it was our forms value. Then you execute it, and if there's any output parameters, you can retrieve the values from the output parameters. Or as you can do as I've done here in drag and drop um, the stored procedure onto your designer surface, it's already pre-configured, and you can save a lot of time by just setting the values. So we hope that this was helpful to you, that you learned a little bit more about the data commands parameter collection, and that you can use that whenever you use your 